is rational and irrational numbers, natural numbers. Okay, so what are natural numbers? All the counting numbers which you've learned from your uh, junior kg class number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All these counting numbers are called as natural numbers. Okay, when you add 0 to this group, when you add 0 to this group, then this group becomes a group of whole numbers. Okay, so first thing is natural numbers where you have all your counting numbers. When you add 0 to these counting numbers, you get a group of whole numbers. Then the third thing we have are integers. Now what are integers? Integers are basically the positive natural numbers plus the negative counterparts of those positive numbers. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4, all these natural numbers plus you also have 0 and the negative counterparts. It is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. All these come under integers. Natural numbers, whole numbers, integers. Now, integers include the numbers 0 plus the natural numbers. Remember one thing children, your 0 does not have a positive or a negative sign. We've done natural numbers, whole numbers, integers and now we'll study about rational numbers. Basically, there are two things we need to keep in mind. First, a rational number is in the form P upon Q or as your textbook says, it's standard Maharashtra board textbook, they're using M upon N, whatever it is, we, we can use M upon N or P upon Q. So it's, uh, it's in a fraction form, that is it's numerator and denominator form. Secondly, N should not be equal to zero. zero. These two points are very important. Now we'll, we'll, have, we'll see some examples of fractional numbers. And it means it's a fraction form, fine? So you can have any numbers on top and down, like, you know, 4 upon 3, minus 3 upon 2, anything. We call it rational numbers or, or you also call it fractions. Apart from fraction, you also have, these are fractions. Apart from fractions, you also have decimal numbers. Now, if I say 1.5, 1.5 is not in fraction form. It's a decimal number. So, should we call it a rational number? Yes or no? Here there will be a confusion. Now, see, 1.5 can be written as 15 upon 10. Hence, numerator denominator form. So, 1.5 also you can call a rational number. Basically, decimals also can be called rational numbers. If we have single natural numbers like 3, 1, minus 1, can we call these numbers as rational numbers? There are no de denominators for these numbers. Minus 1 upon 1. So you can write them as numerator and denominator form by putting denominator as 1. So basically, your rational numbers are fractions. You can call fractions. You can call decimals as rational numbers. And those natural numbers or integers which are written singly without a denominator can also be called rational numbers. So I hope this is clear. But remember, the denominator, the number which is down should not be equal to 0. Only two things you need to keep in mind. It's numerator denominator form and the denominator is not equal to 0. So these are rational numbers. So to show a rational number on a number line, what do we need to do? First of all, remember what is a number line. Number line is a line which has positive number that is plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. Here you have your positive numbers. Here you have their negative counterparts. That is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Basically, this is what you've learned in your 7th standard class. 
So you have your positive numbers, numbers here and your negative numbers here. So this is how you plot your integers on a number line. So now we'll see how to plot rational numbers. Now, for example, uh, you have the first solved example given in your textbook that is 7 upon 3, 2 and minus 2 upon 3. Okay. So now you have to plot this on a number line. So when you have to, when the, when you have to do this, what you have to do is to first you draw a number line. Now you use a scale to draw a number line. I'll just draw it roughly like that. When you are drawing, use a scale. Draw a line. Now this, the, the denominator, this tells us how many parts are there between two integers. For example, now we begin with 0 here. 0 is in the center. You have positive here. You have negative here. Then you have 1. You have 2, then you have minus 1, and then you have minus 2. Now what happens is, this number 3 denotes that this has to be divided into 3 parts. So 1, 2, and 3. Okay? So that denotes that it has to be divided into 3 parts. 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2. 2 and 3. Okay, so now you have the first one is 7 upon 3. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this will be your 7 upon 3. The next is the number 2. So now basically we all know 2 is over here, it's divided into 3 parts. Correct? So 2 is already, we have marked 2. The next number is minus 2 upon 3. So now minus 2 upon 3. So here you have 0. So here also I will divide it into 3 parts. 1, 2, 3. So you have this as uh, minus 1 upon 3, minus 2 upon 3. Here you have minus 1 because it comes as minus 3 upon 3. So you get it as minus 1. Then here you have minus 4, minus 5, upon 3, upon 3. So here you were told to plot minus 2 upon 3. So this is called as minus 3 upon 3 over here. Basically, during exams, we, we usually give you all numbers and we tell you all to plot. So you don't have to show all the numbers, but only the ones which are asked. I just showed you so that you, you get your concepts right. So you have your 2 here, you have your 7 upon 3 here and you have your minus 2 upon 3 over here. Now the first sum which is there in your textbook is this. Show the following numbers on a number line. Draw a separate number line for each example. So you have 3 upon 2, 5 upon 2 and minus 3 upon 2. So for that what we do is first draw a number line. Okay, then you have your 0. Fine. From 0, now the, the sum says 3 upon 2, 5 upon 2 and minus 3 upon 2. That means between 0 and 1, we need to have 2 parts. So here we have 2 and here we have 3. So how many parts? 2 parts. So we divide it into 2 parts. Similarly, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, so 2 parts. So, 2 parts here, 2 parts here, 2 parts here. Okay? So, now you have 3 upon 2. So, 1, 2, 3. Here, so we have 3 upon 2. Then, 5 upon 2. So, this is 4. This is 5. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 upon 2. Then you have minus 3 upon 2. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 upon 2. Yo, yo, and 
you. That's it. I hope this is clear to you. Now, the next thing that we have is observe the number line and answer the questions. Now, they have given us a number line. Initially, they told us to draw a number line. Now, the number line has been given. We have to answer these three questions. So, we already know how to plot numbers on a number line. So, it's going to be easy for us to answer these questions. The first one, which number is indicated by point B? Now, point B, B. Now, when we see the number line, point B is on the left hand side of 0. So, it's going to be a negative number. So, whatever number, whatever answer we get, it's going to be negative. So, first, let's count how many points are there between point 0 or O and B. So, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is minus 10. Okay. Now, between two numbers, between these two numbers or these two numbers, how many parts are there? Let's count. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. There are four parts. That means these two numbers are divided into four parts. So, this is going to be, the denominator is going to be 4. So, basically, the number which is indicated point by point B is number minus 10 upon 4. Since the it's the 10th dot after 0 and since it's on the left hand side it's going to be minus 10 and since it's divided each number the distance between each like number with 0 and minus 1 or 0 or 1 with the, the distance the gap the parts are 4 so that's why the denominator will be 4 and the number denoted by point B is going to be minus 10 upon 4 which point indicates the number 1, 3 by 4? Now, this is in the mixed fraction form. So, we convert it. So, we have 1, 3 upon 4. To convert it, what do we do? 4 multiplied by 1. Here, it's multiplied. Then, here, it is added. Plus 3 upon 4. So, 4 ones are 4 plus 3. So, 4 ones are 4 plus 3 is... 7 upon 4. Basically, they want to know 7 upon 4. So, 7 upon 4 means positive 7. So, it's going to be on this side of 0, the right hand side. So, let's count 7 points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 is here and as it is, there are 4 parts. So, 7 upon 4 comes here. Which which alphabet is this? This is alphabet C. So which point indicates the number 1, 3 by 4? It is point C. Now state whether the statement point D denotes the number 5 upon 2 is true or false. 5 upon 2. Okay, remember one thing here. The denominator is 2 and not 4. Okay, so let's plot first. 1, it's positive, so we'll just move on the right hand side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A 5 is here, but this is going to be 5 upon 4. Right? F then 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is going to be 10 upon 4. If you divide 10 upon 4, 10 divided by 4, what do you get? 2, 2 is 4, 2, 5 is 5 upon 2 basically they are asking you about 10 upon 4 so the point D denotes the number 5 upon 2 so this 10 upon 4 is equal to 5 upon 2 which point is there over here point D so that means the statement is correct point D denotes the number 5 upon 2 so we have solved the second part also so uh, exercise that is problem set 1.1 is over.